I had, I had two experiences were probably the worst things that ever happened. Um, one was I had only been the platoon leader for maybe a week or so, <clears throat> and uh, we had found a big weapons cache, and we so we stayed in this location for a couple of weeks, um, and then we did, they decided to move the company to a new location. So we were uh, moving single file through the jungle up a ridge line going to the top of this hill. It would take a few days. And uh, so the first day, um, uh, Lieutenant Bullet, Fred Bullet, a great name for an infantry officer, Bullet, um, his platoon was first. He'd been in the field five or six months. Uh, so he walked by me, he had his gold bar in his helmet, in his lieutenant's bar, and he was walking point for his platoon. I said, geez, Fred, I, I know I'm the new guy here, but that doesn't seem real smart. Have your bar and your helmet like that. And walk and point, it's not really the platoon leader's job. He said, hey, your number's up, your number's up. So we all moved out, and maybe an hour or two later, um, the lead platoon got ambushed, and, uh, and Fred got shot, and he ended up losing a leg. So uh, uh, the next day was another guy, Lieutenant Mann. He came in country around the same time as me, but he had been in the field longer because I had been back in base camp. So his platoon led, and nothing happened that day. So the, the third day was my turn, and this is the first time I actually led the company, you know, on a, on a movement. So we were going up this ridge line and uh, uh, cutting our way with, you know, with the machetes and stuff. And we're all strung out, one, you know, single file. <clears throat> and so we had just stopped to take a break for a few minutes, and there was this, I was walking uh, 13th man out of 35. So that's far enough up, you know, and then you can control better if you're in the middle like that. So uh, uh, we've just taken a break, and I heard this tremendous explosion in front of me. And we didn't know what it was. We didn't know it was um, a booby trap or an ambush or whatever it was. And, uh, and then we realized we were firing um, artillery and 4.2 mortars, 4 deuce mortars, from the fire base towards the top of the hill as we were moving in case there was anybody up there. And what it was is one of the four just rounds just went the wrong way and landed in the middle of my uh, lead squad. And uh, we finally figured out what that was and they called off the artillery. And uh, <clears throat> this is, this is the, the, a very emotional part for me, uh, even after all these years. But So we figured out what it was and, uh, and we started, to, we had the artillery stop fire and then we checked in to see how, you know, who's hurt and that kind of thing. And as we're starting to do that, uh, a white phosphorus grenade that one of the men had been carrying probably cracked when, when the round hit, exploded, and burned some guys with white phosphorus. Um, so now we're trying to uh, cut down a, a pad for the medevac to come in. And uh, I, I was going forward and I saw a new guy, he only been with us a few days, uh, turning like 19 the day before. And, uh, some guys were working on him, so I walked past him. I went up to the front, and uh, um, one of my guys had uh, taken a piece of shrapnel through his heart and killed him. Um, you didn't know what happened at first, you know. Another guy had half his head, like, cleaved off, um, and, uh, you know, his brain was hanging on the tree and that kind of stuff. Um, so they, those two were dead, and I went back. And the guy who I had seen originally, they put a poncho over him, he was dead. And the fourth guy was sitting up, trying to push his insides in. And uh, uh, so this guy, uh, uh, they met him back to him, but he died like, two days later in the hospital. So I lost uh, four men uh, killed and another uh, 13 wounded. How did you cope with that? Well, yeah, you just, I went to I went to actually bandage up one of my guys. He had like half his hand taken off, and he had some shrapnel on his forehead, um, so he's bleeding. He couldn't really see his hand or anything. So he's, he's at, I'm trying to figure out how to put a bandage on half a hand, you know. And he's saying to me, he said, "Sir, am I, am I okay? Am I going to be okay?" And uh, I knew before he came in the army, he worked in an office as a typist, you know. So I'm just telling him, "You're fine. You know, you're going to be okay." get you out of here. I just couldn't tell him the truth, you know. And, uh, and I just wanted to sit down and cry, you know, but um, 
You know, I was the leader. I couldn't do that. So that's uh, that. That's one of the two worst things that happened to me. You know, I'd only been a couple weeks lost, half a platoon.